Glory. Glory. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because we have a what? Choice. A choice. You have a choice to rejoice, or you have a choice to be miserable. That's your choice. God gives you power, doesn't he? Everyone say, I got power. I got power. I've been granted power. Born with the power of the Holy Spirit. First John chapter 5. Is everybody there? Remember, this is not a Bible study. This is a training session. We are not religious. We are soldiers in an eternal army. We have been called to what? Battle. What's our purpose? Destroy Satan's kingdom. And our destiny is to what? Infiltrate the world system and rescue those who have been taken captive. Hallelujah. If you've been rescued, God expects you to be an extension of his hand and mouth and body to rescue. But training, training is for reigning, isn't it? Amen. In 1 John chapter 5 and verse 18, let's speak it. We know that whoever is born of God does not what? Does not sin. Does it mean you, make, you don't make mistakes? No, you make mistakes, Amen. But we don't desire to sin. Amen. The desire to sin is gone if you're born of God. If you're not born of God, the desire to sin is still there. We know that we are born of God and, um, and whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps him what? Keeps himself. Keeps himself. Keeps himself sanctified. Keeps himself separated from the things. Keeps himself from anything that would defile him. Keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. Why? Because he keeps himself. Keeps himself from idols. Keeps himself from associations that corrupt. Keeps himself from accursed items that corrupt. Keeps himself from away from things that would corrupt his spirit or contaminate him. In verse 19, what does it say? We know that we are born of, we are know that we are of, of God and the whole world lies under the what? Sway of the wicked one. So there is deception. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. And his power is fear. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. Everyone say understanding. So you, we must have an understanding. That understanding for me and you must be constant that the influence is not of the seen world, it's of the unseen world. That must become an understanding constantly. It must not be just something occasionally. We must be learned how to live that. What is influencing you? It's coming from the unseen world. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his son Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from what? Idols. Keep yourselves from what? Idols. idols. You know that we, you and I can be our worst idol. Amen. You know, we, we were talking about um, a higher ground. God was trying to bring us to a higher ground. Two things that we talked about, and just very simple, was dancing with deception and dancing with yourself. And one of the things that the Holy Spirit quickened me tonight was saying, you know, I want you to go deeper on this dancing with deception. Because dancing with deception is called dancing with the devil. Amen. And people don't realize that they still pet evil. They still compromise. They still uh, accept it. People have no idea that they're dancing with the devil. No idea. And they think it's just okay. Because the world says it's okay. Because the world is compromised. Well, God's children are not to compromise. Let me tell you, you're going to know certain things when you're dancing with deception because dancing with deception is dancing with the devil. And when that begins to happen, we begin to fall out of divine order. In other words, the enemy takes you out of divine position. The first thing, you don't even realize you're dancing with him. You, have no, you don't even realize it until later. Either you don't see it because the first thing he does is blind you. He blinds you who you're dancing with. Amen? The wicked one doesn't touch those that don't have idols. Self is the greatest idol. 
people are dancing with deception called or dancing with the devil and don't even know it because the the enemy accesses the believers through dancing with self because they're more their self is first. So self is the idol. It's me first. It's how I feel. It's what it's who I am. It's this. They, they blame everything and they say, oh, it's just who, who I am when they're doing sin. And that's just me. No, it isn't. When people are angry and, and hatred and, and grumbling, complaining, that's just me. No, it isn't. That's not the character of Christ. If it isn't the character of Christ, then there's another character there. Amen? We must have, have an understanding that many dance with deception, not willing to give up their life. And many people say, oh, I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. I gave him my life, but yet they still fight for their life. By fighting for your life, you're still dancing with the devil until you've come to the end of your life for a new one. God does not restore your life. He gives you a brand new one. Does everybody get it? He gives you a brand new life, and you've got to be willing to come to the end of yourself and let it go. So there's a place that God wants us, he wants to, in the arena, as maintaining this new life. By maintaining this new life, we're constantly taking off the old and putting on the new. Constantly taking off the old and putting on the new. Does everybody understand it? Again, it's not a start over, it's a new. It's brand new. So many people have that concept that, I'm going to start over. No, you start new. There is no starting over. Why? Because the old dies and a new comes life. Only if you allow that. In John 12, would you go there with me? How many of y'all know the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy? So he's always looking for an access, isn't he? The, you know, people are, so many times we, we're set on the air, well, man, I'm not sinning, I'm not drinking, I'm not doing this anymore, I'm not doing that anymore, I don't lie anymore, but yet I'm promoting myself. Self is first. It's what I want to do. Then I'm actually opening the door and touching agreement with the voice of the stranger. Does everybody understand it? Next thing you know, you're dancing with the devil. But I'm not sinning. Oh, that's cool. You know, you go to 20, some of these 12-step meetings. They're, oh, I haven't. Uh, they're, they're more concerned on how, how many days they've been clean while they sleep with one another, while they smoke cigarettes and get cancer. Well, they lie and cheat and do everything else, but they're clean. Let me tell you, so they're going to hell clean. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they're dancing with the devil. There was a girl, I think she did that song, Dancing with the Devil. She was a gospel singer first, right? No? Oh, I don't know that. Okay, but anyways, there's many individuals that started dancing with the devil in the music industry and movie industry because they decided to dance with the devil instead of dancing with the Lord for fame and wealth and riches and their reward is on this side. That's it. It's a temporary reward, isn't it? In John 12, verse 24, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and what? Dies. It remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. Hello. That means we must come to the end of ourself. That's what we call den denying ourselves or dying to self. We are dead in Christ. He who loves his life, come on, read it with me, will what? Lose it. And he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will what? Will honor. So again, it's not a one-time point of death. It's consistent. And there's times when you're going to have to die even more. You got to die even more. Dying is denying yourself. Amen? In Luke 9. The grain must die because living in the new is resurrection power. We must reject the old in the past from the future. 
Why? Because we have a new identity. Amen? The enemy always wants to steal your identity. Remember that. It is vitally important. He's always trying to steal who you are. We're still going by our social security number and our name. That's how the world recognizes you. Amen? But God recognizes you as son and daughter. Son and daughter. That's who he looks for. Son and daughter. Those who are his. There is a father, daughter, father, son relationship. He's no longer just God. He's a father. He's no longer just savior. He's dead. Amen? Does everybody get this? And this is called an area of going not only deeper, but getting grounded in the area to where we've got to begin to recognize who we're dancing with. And so many people are beginning to dance with the devil because they're dancing with deception. And if he can deceive you, he asks you to begin to steal. He begins to destroy things, and eventually he will kill you because we allow it, not God. Many people are still blaming God for their circumstances. God didn't do it. We did it. Why? He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. How many opportunities? He's given everyone in this room multiple opportunities over and over and over. Amen? You never know when that hand doesn't come out again. You just don't know. Oh, glory. Luke 9, are we there? In verse 23. Let's speak it together. Then he said to them all, come after me. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses it for his, for his sake will what? Save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and he himself is destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his glory and in his fathers and the holy angels. But I tell you truly that there are some standing here who shall not taste death so they see the kingdom of God. Denying self means take off the old and put on the new. Picking up the cross means to battle. You battle. You don't battle with people. If you battle with people, you open the door. Amen. That means that pride is there and self is still an idol. Your battle is a fight against the enemy, the unseen forces of evil, not with man. So you deny yourself by taking off the old, putting on the new. You pick up the cross by fight. You battle against the unseen forces. Why? So you can follow and get into his presence. Amen? See, what begins to happen is the Holy Spirit will move right back. When you and I start battling in the physical, according to the physical, Holy Spirit backs. And the, whole, the problem is, is when he backs, familiar spirits come. And when familiar spirits come, then people start dancing with the devil because they're dancing with deception. Does everybody understand that? And the next thing you know, you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. I mean, with the, a familiar spirit and not the Holy Spirit. And then you're going to start seeing fruits change. You're going to start irritation. The first thing you're going to start seeing also is compromise. The compromise of worship. The compromise of of uh, staying right with God in every area, the compromise of hunger and thirst, the compromise of prayer. Everything begins to get compromised. Things become more important than him. Is everybody okay? Praise God. In Luke 14, Dancing with deception is dancing with who? The devil. Who comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. He brings division. He brings strife. He brings envy. Man, you're dancing with the devil. But I love Jesus.
Well, Satan's greatest weapon is what? Deception. You may t say you love Jesus, but you can still be deceived. Hello? I know a lot of people that love Jesus, and they're going to hell. They say they love Jesus, but they're really not dancing with him. They're dancing with the world. They're dancing with themselves. Oh, I've known the Lord for years. Really? Does the girl you're living with know him too? Does the guy you're shaking up with know him too? Does the person you're doing dope with know him too? Hello? Oh, hallelujah. Luke 14, 25. Let's speak it together. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, hello, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. That's powerful. Does everybody get that? It doesn't mean you, you hate them evil hate. Amen? It means that he's more important. You're no longer a mommy pleaser or a daddy pleaser or a wife or a spouse. You're a God pleaser. The moment you compromise that, you dance with the devil. Does everybody get that? The moment you compromise that, you dance with the devil because dancing with the devil always starts. The fruit of dancing with the devil is compromise. The first one is blind. The second is compromise. What you used to do, then you talk about how you used to do with God, but you ain't doing it no more. And you're dancing with something else. Usually a familiar spirit. So, hello? Amen. Then one of the things that begins to happen also, you begin to see people doing things, and you begin to criticize them when you're doing the same thing. That's not dancing with the Holy Spirit. That's dancing with familiar spirits. Hello? Glory. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Verse 28. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish all who see it begin to what? Mock him. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else whether the other is still a great way off and he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all. Everyone say forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. So the first thing that must be forsaken is you, us, self. It isn't about us anymore. It's not about us. Amen? We must, anything compared of loving Christ must be hated. And again, it's not as a physical hate, it's a strong love towards him. Where we are a God pleaser. That's when we talked about the Lord is always before us. And whatever decision you do, whatever you're doing, you're looking to him. What do you think? What do you think? Amen? Because one of the things you hate is the presence of evil. But again, the presence of evil will come as a familiar spirit and you won't know the difference until the fruits start to manifest. It's what we call true colors. Amen? The true colors start to come out. James 3. I see a lot of politicians dancing with the devil. In fact, they're beyond dancing with the devil. They are the devil. <laughs> Demonized. James 3, 13. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak it together. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct. Good what? Conduct. conduct. You're going to know by conduct who you're dancing with. Amen. You're going to know whether you're reacting or responding. If you're reacting, you ain't dancing with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of what? Wisdom, which tells you what to do. But if you have bitter envy and what? Self-seeking. That means you're not denying yourself. You're seeking for yourself. You're fighting for yourself. You're fighting for your life. In your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. Why? You ain't dancing with the Holy Spirit then. Because that's not what he brings. He brings peace, joy, and righteousness. He brings understanding. He brings vision. He brings sight. He brings conviction. He brings purity. And he brings a clean tongue. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. It's what? Pure. So you don't agree with things that are not pure. Amen? You will not. If you do, then you begin to dance with who? The devil. What you agree with is what you'll be judged by also. So if you agree with something that's not pure, you're touching something unclean. That means what you're agreeing with is opening the door to you. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure than what? Peaceable, gentle, willing to yield. That's submission, isn't it? Full of what? Mercy and good fruits without partiality, without hypocrisy, and without bigotry. Without betrayal. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in the peace by those who what? Make peace. Self-seeking in heart is dancing with the devil. It's dancing with deception. It's promoting. Let me share with you. Did you ever hear of self-defense? People think, hi, hi. Self-defense is protecting yourself. It's actually self-offense. <laughs> Hello? It's not self-defense. The world talk calls it self-defense. In the spirit, it's called self-offense. Hallelujah. Self-justification. Blindness. Not able to see who they're dancing with. <laughs> and the dance goes on. Just continues. Why? There's justification, compromise, complacency, lukewarmness. They're, one of the things that begin to happen is lack of wisdom and discernment. Now, the move is more towards assumption. Well, this is what I believe. Well, there's been no answer from God. Well, I'm going to step out in faith. Well, that's not faith. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by seeing. Amen? 1 Corinthians 3. There are a lot of good people who are dancing with the devil. They're good people. But they're not unplugged from the world. Let me tell you, the enemy always wants to plug you back in. And you don't even know it. But everybody else begins to. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk, not with solid food. For until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able to receive it. Why? Because they're not dancing with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will bring you understanding. He will bring you counsel, correction, direction, conviction. If You know that song that we were singing? He is not silent. We are not what? Listening. We're not listening. We're not hearing. We're allowing emotions to make decisions. We're allowing pleasing man to make decisions. Because the distance is the disconnect. Let me share with you that when the, the enemy comes in, you start dancing with him, you get disconnected. But again, he brings a false presence. You know, one, one time we had this guy that, man, I'm telling you, he dealt with so many familiar spirits, it was incredible. 
And he was acting all granola, nutty and fruity, you know. And he would say all of these things. I saw this, I saw that, and this and that. And he'd speak with tongues and whatever. It's what you call a mixed anointing. Finally, I, and, and, and he was in the discipleship house, and a, and a house manager was saying, man, this. And so we were, we were talking. So we, we had a group meeting, and, uh, and, and we started going around the room and sharing some certain things. And, and, and this guy got up, and, and I shared with him. I said, man, look, at, I want to pray with you because I had a vision of him holding a teddy bear. And that teddy bear was comforting him, but it, it wasn't physical. It was a familiar spirit. So he kept rejecting the true spirit of God and true conviction, counsel, and correction and wanted that emotional feeling. And that emotional feeling kept giving him goosebumps. And he relied on goosebumps, not truth. So I laid my hands on him and cast that spirit out. The dude hit the floor. And when he got up, he said, man, I feel empty. Praise God. Now let's get you filled. And, I, and we prayed for him. And, and, and so I was in my office. And next thing I know, he comes to my window. He says, Pastor, I can't deal with this. I said, what's the matter? I don't feel anything. Praise God. It's not about a feeling, bro. You just got freed from a familiar spirit. I can't handle that. And he took off. Because he'd been dancing with that familiar spirit so long that that familiar spirit convinced him to reject the Holy Spirit and continue to dance with him. Amen. See, this is not about a feeling. There's times when the Holy Spirit will step back and he'll want you to know, man, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. Where is he? He's there, believe me. He wants to know whether you're following a feeling or following truth. I'm telling you, he brings you through that. He will test you. When you're a baby, pff, hang around babies. The presence is always there. But as you start to mature more, the Holy Spirit will back off. Say, let me see. Where are you going? You be walking, he stops. One day I was in my living room and I was sitting there and I was watching TV and I kept it sensing this unction, unction. I said, man, I got to go. I went upstairs. I said, what? What's up? He said, I just want to know if you'd obey me. Just want to know if you would come. I said, you don't want to tell me nothing? No. So I went back downstairs and turned on the TV. <laughs> He's just looking, looking for reality in me and you. He wants to know if you really want a relationship with him. He wants to know if you really do love him. And love is not about an emotion. Love is a choice. Peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit is the love of God. We've got to stop this arena of how I feel. We've got to stop making decisions in how I feel. You're going to either believe this or how you feel. And we've got to stop going into the arena of self-offense. Because that exchange is the presence. And one of the things, that's what the enemy does. Who loves to exchange presence. Why? We allow it. Amen? Is everybody okay? Oh, glory. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to Galatians 5. Galatians chapter 5. Look at what we did when we were addicts. Out there drinking, partying, or whatever. People are still addicts out there, even though they don't drink and party. Some of them are addicted to themselves. People are addicted to technology. They're addicted to phones. People are addicted to certain music, man. You try and take music away from a kid, they manifest. <laughs> Unless it's the right music. If it's the right music, they're walking. 
There is no problem. Why? Because you don't care what's removed. See, when you're about yourself, you fight for what's being removed. Does everybody get it? Well, you lost this, you're losing. Who cares? As long as you're pleasing God. See, but when you're fighting for yourself, you're dancing with the devil. Amen? Amen. Then you're fighting for the wrong presence. And you're looking to feel good, look good, smell good. But you stink. <laughs> Hello? Why? Because it's rotten fruit. In the eyes of God, that's stinky. There is no aroma of sacrifice, of denial of self. And when you start dancing with the devil, there is no denying self. It's a false denial. It's a false humility. Amen? Amen. Galatians 5, 7, please. Let's read it together. Galatians 5, 7. Of course, you can never escape that law that says whatever you sow, you what? Reap. Reap. In verse 7, let's speak it. You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion or influence does not come from him who calls you. Then where did it come from? Amen. Forces, the unseen forces of evil. This persuasion does not come from him who calls you. A little leaven leavens a whole lump. I have confidence in you, in the Lord, that you will have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to what? Liberty, Liberty which means freedom. Only do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the what? Flash. Because you'll lose that freedom and you'll exchange the presence. Through the love, serve one another. For all the laws fulfilled in one word, even this, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you be consumed by one another. I say then walk in a spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Dancing with Christ. Look at what begins to happen. You know when you dance, right? There's a rhythm. And you're dancing to the music. There's a rhythm. Well, you know what happens? You know, I've known, when I've, when I've danced with my wife sometimes, I've stepped on her foot, you know. There's, oh, okay, then you've got to try to get back in rhythm. You know. Let me tell you, when you get out of rhythm is when the enemy tries to step in. And you can get back in rhythm with the devil and not even know it. He'll be spinning you around and, yeah. Yeah, you're good. He'd be telling you're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you little prideful thing. You're wonderful. Look at you. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're dancing with the devil and you're manifesting stinky fruit because that presence has been exchanged. Amen. Everybody okay? So we don't want to get out of rhythm, do we? And when we do get out of the rhythm, we want to get back into rhythm with the Lord, not with a familiar spirit, divination spirits. Deceiving, seducing spirits. Spirits of pride and arrogance. Dancing with Christ is important. We stay in rhythm. Amen? Amen. Mark 8. Mark 8.31, please. And let's speak it. And he, as he, Jesus, began, somebody there? Amen. Began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He spoke this word openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Hello. Can you imagine a man rebuking God? <laughs> I 
I think the Lord was kind of laughing at that. But when he turned around and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter saying, get behind me, Satan. In other words, who are you dancing with, homie? Amen. What happened? You were just dancing with me a few minutes ago. Now you're dancing with the devil. For you are not mindful of things of what? God. But you are mindful of things of self. Man. Amen. See how quickly that can happen? It takes that moment. That's it. The next thing you know, you're dancing with deception and the devil and don't even know it. And it's a process to where you finally get it. Sometimes everybody else has to tell you before you get it because you've been blinded. Making wrong decisions out of God's time. Fighting for yourself. Pride, arrogance, everything else. Offense. Amen? Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Let's go a little further. When he, had called the, uh, the, when he had called the people to himself, with his disciples also he said, whoever desires to come after me, this is after he rebuked Peter, let him what? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel's sake will save it. For what profit? What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for a soul? For whoever is ashamed of me, hello, in my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will also be ashamed of when he comes into glory and his Father with the holy angels. Wow. In other words, if you deny him, He's going to deny you. Look at, we're seeing this happen all over. It's incredible. It's incredible of how much deception is happening. And how many things are going on from government all the way down, even in churches. Where you got homosexuals, you got lesbians and so forth, and, and everything is being approved. Does everybody understand? Same-sex marriage. It's not about a homosexual. They can get free. Man, I'll take all the homosexuals that want to get free. I'll take all the lesbians and transgenders or whatever they are. Some of them don't even know who they are. One day they're a girl, the next day they're a guy. I don't know. I don't care what bathroom they go in. You come in here, we can, you can get free by the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? And there's only two bathrooms in this house. One for men and one for women. Praise God. Yes. <laughs> Peter was dancing with Christ and all of a sudden was dancing with the devil. Amen? Amen. He, he had a selfish idol. I'm going to save Jesus. I got, I got your back to work. Come on. I'll kick anybody's butt that tries to get you. <sighs> get behind me, Satan. You just became an idol. You're mindful of yourself and men, not me. That's what Fleshbook does. You know what Facebook is? Look at me! <laughs> it's all about me. Oh, puke. I see so many women with puckered lips and everything else go on Fleshbook. <laughs> They're all giving a kiss. I want to give him a binky. <laughs> Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3. One of the things that happens to individuals, they become religious. When you're dancing, when you're not dancing with the Holy Spirit, you're dancing with deception. People become religious. And it's a religious, they begin to use letter instead of being led by the Spirit. And of course, they, they take the letter out of context anyways. I've had many, I've, had, I've gone to jails and chaplains have come up to me and said, you know you have a ponytail? Really? Wow. Okay. Well, you know, it's not allowed. You're not allowed. Get behind me, Satan. <laughs> You're really 
religious, foul, unclean spirit, you? 1 Corinthians 3.18. Let no one deceive himself. Hello. <laughs> if any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become what? Wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men. For all things are yours, whether Paul, Apollos, or Cephas, or uh, the world, of, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. And you are Christ, and Christ is God's. Wow. Dancing with deception causes compromise of thought. We begin to compromise. We're no longer casting down things anymore. We're allowing them to overtake us. Thoughts, words, we just throw it out, whatever. Compromise of love. There comes a compromise of gratitude. People begin to forget where they came from, what God has done. That's when you begin to dance with the devil. The attitude, motives and desires. Compromise of kingdom building at first. Yes, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I want it. Yes, I want it. Da, da, da. Well, I, yeah, I want, yeah. Well, right now I need to build my own kingdom. Then, then eventually we'll, I'll help God. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah, I'm willing to go all the way, but not today. Not, not, I, got, I got some things I need to do. <laughs> Dancing with the devil. Compromise. Those are fruits of dancing with the devil. Does everybody get this? Because you're dancing with deception. Compromise is the main one. People begin, become religious and, and believe that they're above others. Amen? Proverbs 23. They used to be the first to volunteer. Now they hide. <laughs> Dancing with the devil. Proverbs 23, 16. Is everybody okay? Okay, verse 16, let's speak it together. 23, 16, let's start at 15. My son, if your heart is wise, my heart will rejoice indeed, I myself. Yes, my inmost being will rejoice when your lips speak right things. Do not let your heart do what? Envy sinners, but be zealous for the fear of the Lord when? All day. That's another compromise. The fear of the Lord is no longer before. It's a compromise. For surely there is a what? Hereafter. Hereafter, and your hope will not be cut off. <laughs> compromise of the fear of the Lord. Has everybody got that? Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, in verse 16. Oh, Proverbs 3, verse 1, I'm sorry. Verse 1, let's speak it together. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. If that's not happening... You're dancing with something else. Trust in the Lord with all of your what? Heart. And lean not on your own understanding. That's another thing. That people begin to compromise in trusting God and begin to come, uh, come more on leaning on their own understanding how things ought to be. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways what? Acknowledge, Acknowledge him. That compromise of acknowledging him in all the ways stops. It's the only... Once in a while, when they feel like it. Well, I'm going to go do this. Would you ask the Lord if that's the right thing? Well, no. 
I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go buy that. I'm going to go buy a car. I'm going to go buy this. I'm going to go this. I'm going to go do this. I'm... Acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. And he will direct your paths. Other than that, somebody else is going to step in and start dancing with you. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Honor the Lord with your what? Possessions. That begins to get compromised. And with the first fruits of all of your what? Increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Tithe and offerings are no longer first. They're second. That's the compromise. My son, do not despise the chasing in the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects just as a father the son in whom he delights. Many run. They get offended when corrected. Amen? Offense, because that's self-offense, when corrected. Is everybody okay? Compromise. Compromise in relationship. Compromise in hearing. Compromise in decreeing. There's a compromise in every area. Compromise in prayer. Let's go to uh, Ephesians 4. <laughs> compromise and accursed items, compromised and all kinds of things. Piercings, people piercing them bodies in weird places. Hello? Tattoos. All those are compromised. Why? Because that's what the world does. We're not to do what the world does anymore. People piercing their tongues. You know what a pierced tongue is? It's called a serpent tongue. It's pierced. That's what the serpent is. Brings a curse on them. And you've got to remember that the enemy is trying to bring a curse on you. Where the curse is, he's got a legal right to access and come steal, kill, and destroy Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 17. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk like the rest of the Gentiles walk in the fertility of their mind, having their understanding what? Darkened. Why? Who are they dancing with? Amen. They're dancing with the devil. Deception. Being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you've not learned Christ, the anointing. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? You put off concerning the former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and being renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God and true righteousness and what? Holiness. Therefore, put away what? Lying. All of these are fruits of dancing with the devil. Lying. Put away lying. Let each of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Don't be angry, but don't what? Sin. It's called righteous anger, not carnal anger. Amen. There's a righteous anger. And it's not according to the flesh. It's according to the spirit. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give what? Place to the devil. Because if you give place to the devil, you're dancing with the wrong dude. Let whom who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor. Working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give to him who is in need. Now, what happens with individuals, here's the compromise. People begin to labor on them, to themselves instead of labor on to the Lord. They begin to labor for themselves instead of laboring on to the Lord. Lord, I labor on to you. See, so if you're actually out there working and you're laboring for the Lord, then you're not laboring for yourself. Then everything that goes on, God's in control. Or else you try to take control, then you go back into self-controlling you and you begin to dance with deception. If you're not laboring on to the Lord, then you're laboring on to yourself. Amen? We're laboring on to the Lord, so we're laboring on for the kingdom. So your thoughts are always thinking, how can I expand the kingdom on everything I do? 
the finances I bring in? How can I expand the kingdom? How can I promote the love of God? How can I expand these things? Am I doing all that I can do to expand the kingdom of God? Or am I still expanding myself? Amen? Verse 29. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. But what is good for necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. And do not what? Grieve the Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. Acts 17. Dancing with deception is dancing with who? The devil. And we've done enough of it. And just because you're a spirit-filled, tongue-speaking believer doesn't mean you can't dance with the devil. You'll be dancing with familiar spirits and you won't even know it. But everybody else will. Verse 29. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone or something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, turn away. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has adorned or ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And of course, when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from there. Again, there's been a, a, a time where God has allowed it to happen, but no more. That time is over with. Everyone is accountable. Everyone is accountable. Well, you know, I've heard people, I'll be talking to somebody, say, I don't want to hear that stuff. I don't want to hear that stuff. I said, why not? Man, I don't, to, I don't want to know that stuff. What do you mean you don't want to know that stuff? You don't want to know about sin, heaven, hell, or whatever? I don't want to know. Well, just because you don't want to know doesn't mean that you're not accountable. Amen. You're still accountable. Amen? Everybody is still accountable. Philippians 3, and we'll close here. Dancing with deception is dancing with the devil. So we'll just make it real simple. Dancing with the devil. And you got to remember that people don't know. They don't even know it. But they're promoting wrong things. They're voting for wrong things and they're dancing with the devil and they don't even know it. Because it's not about what God is saying, it's about what they're feeling, what they're believing. Because it's about self. And if you're dancing with self, you're dancing with deception. And if you're dancing with deception, you're dancing with the devil. Philippians 3 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. For me to write the same things to you is not tedious, but for it is for your sake. Beware of what? Dogs. Dogs here is demonized person. That's what it means. A dog is a demonized individual. Beware of what? Dogs. Why would, why would he say beware of dogs? Roof, roof, you know. Don't go in that area, man. There's dogs over there. That's not what he means, okay? He means demonized individuals. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the what? In the flesh. Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law of Pharisee. Concerning zeal, persecuting the church. Concerning righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for what? 
Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. And to be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may what? Know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I what? I press on. I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to the things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upper call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are what? Mature, have this in your mind. And if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule and let's, let us be of the what? Same mind. Amen? The same mind. Again, when you sense compromise, you're dancing with something else. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. And the seed that's been imparted in your, in your people today, protect by the blood of Jesus and let it grow and bear fruit for your glory. We ask for your forgiveness in any area where you've danced with anything but you. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound and bring light, truth, life, power, deliverance, healing into every part of our being that we may be the offsprings of the anointed one and his anointing given glory to the name of all names, Jesus the Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with his glory.